What's going on guys, Slavey here, back with another Albion Online guide for you. One of the most requested guides by beginners is the player or personal island. And this is very understandable because the player island makes for a lot of daily silver income. And over time, as you level your skills and become more efficient, your island will generate even more money. In fact, you might even own multiple islands at some point and make millions of silver every day without any risk to it which makes the player island an excellent investment for anyone that plays the game. So today I'm going to teach you all the basics regarding personal islands so that you can also get started and make your way to a lot of silver. To purchase an island you simply have to go to the island merchant that you can find in any city. Buying a tier 1 island will cost you less than 20k silver so it's accessible even to newer players. However, you do need to have a 30 day premium subscription active so if you are a free to play player, you first have to grind for that. Once you have your tier 1 island, you can upgrade it 5 more times with each additional tier costing more and unlocking more farm and building plots. The final level is tier 6, so slowly upgrade your island over time as you get more silver that you can invest in it. You can visit your personal island through the island merchant that you can find in every city, but also through the travel planner. Even if you are at a place without an island merchant, such as your guild's hideout, you can still access it through this NPC. Teleporting to your island with items on you will only be free if you are at the location where your island is. So if you have your personal island in Limhurst and your inventory is full of items, you can teleport for free to your island with your items as long as you are in Limhurst as well. If you are in any other location however, teleporting will only be free if you have no items with you. Now at this point I can already guess most of you will ask what is the best place to buy my island and honestly it really doesn't matter that much. I recommend you treat your island as a standalone thing and just harvest your crops, feed your animals and do whatever whenever you're there. I personally have mine in Carleon because I often play from there so choose whichever location you see yourself playing at most. My personal advice to beginners would be to choose one of the outer royal cities which would be Limhurst, Port Sterling, Thetford, Martlock or Bridgewatch. Basically, whichever you like most and see yourself spending the most time at. First thing you will see when you are on your island is the travel planner. And just like how you can use this NPC to get to your island, you can also use it from your island to get to other places. The second option of this NPC is the island manager, where you can add other islands to your favorites so that it shows up on choose destination. This way you can also start teleporting to other players' islands. This is especially useful for when you want to create more islands on your old characters which you wish to access with one of your other characters. Right next to the travel planner, you will see a board where you can set up the access rights for your player island. If you have any alts, it might be wise to make them co-owners so that you can do about everything on them that you can do on your main as well. And if you have friends that occasionally want to visit your island, you can give them the right of visitor. The next thing we will do is open our map and here we can see the various plots on our island. Since this is a max level island, I have 11 building plots and 5 farming plots. As you can see, all my buildings and farms are already built. But how does one go about building a house or a farm? When you are at one of the building plots that are empty, you can press on H to open the build UI. Within this, you will find all the different buildings you can potentially place. In the fourth tab, you will see the house options and among them is the house itself. Simply click on build and place the house on the building plot. You now start at the construction phase and can start building your house by delivering the necessary materials. So in this case we need 30 rough logs, 3 rough stone and 180 limestone block. Once you deliver all the materials, your house will be built and you can now start using it. However, just like the island levels, your house also has levels of its own and you can upgrade it all the way to tier 8. Simply click on the scroll at the entrance of the house to open all possible actions where you will also find upgrade. Houses are really great for two things. The first thing is laborers, which can make for a lot of money on a daily basis. You can purchase laborers from the house options and then place them in your houses. When you interact with them, you can buy empty journals, which you can fill by doing the required activity. And once they're filled, simply deliver the journals back to the laborers to put them to work. 22 hours later, they'll return with a bunch of materials and an empty journal. Rinse and repeat this process every day with all your laborers and you will not only make profit, but you will also level them. This way, over time, you will have higher level laborers, receive higher level materials and make even more money. 
In the Manage tab, you will have various options. And most importantly, you will see the happiness of your laborers. This stat is increased by three different things as shown in Manage and will boost the amount of resources you get from your laborers. First, you need one bed per NPC for a total of three and one table. The last stat is from Furniture Items that specifically boosts laborer happiness. There are general ones that add a bit of happiness and also class specific ones that add even more happiness. The second thing houses are great for is storage. You can place chests in your houses which you can then use to store your items. So instead of buying bank tabs for expensive prices over and over, this is a much better and much cheaper option. To build something on your farm plots, you once again press H to open the build UI and this time navigate to the second window. You can choose any of the four options based on the profession you wish to take upon you. Personally, I used to grow carrots, therefore I have farms on my plots. But if you want to grow herbs, animals or mounts, you will have to go with one of the others. You build these just like the houses in which you place them in the area and then deliver the construction materials. Unlike houses, you don't have to upgrade these plots to higher levels. Once they are built, you can simply start working on your profession. To give you an example on how to use your farm plots, I'll show you how to grow carrots. On your island you will find the farming merchant where you can buy various seeds and animals. Here you simply want to buy carrot seeds and place them on the farm. Once you place the carrot seeds you can click on the field and water them. This will cost you focus but once the carrots are grown 22 hours later you will get much more in return. And as you level carrots to higher levels you will become more focus efficient in which watering carrots will cost less focus over time. So you will be able to water much more carrots and make much more profit at higher levels. You will also notice that depending on what you grow, you might get extra seeds when you use Focus, which you can either use yourself or sell to other players through the marketplace. On that note, it might also be cheaper to buy the items you need for your island management from the marketplace instead of Defender. We went over houses, which can hold laborers and make for storage, and we went over the four options you have for your farm plots. And these things are the most important ones because they are the ones that will make you daily money. But as you notice, there are many more buildings you can choose from in the build UI. So what about those? In general, it's strongly advised not to build any other buildings on your island because of the game mechanics. The way these mechanics work make for more resource return rate on activities such as crafting and refining when done in the royal cities with the bonus to your craft. I believe the only exception within this is the butcher, which is good to have on your island since it doesn't make for extra bonus in the cities. But the butcher is something you will only need if you grow animals. Therefore, my advice is to build houses on all the building plots and to choose one profession for your farm plots. If you choose animals, build a butcher on one of the building plots. Doing it this way will lead to a bunch of higher level laborers over time and you will become more focus efficient with whatever profession you choose for your farms. And all of this, of course, will lead to millions of silver. If you found this guide helpful, make sure to press the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, feel free to ask any questions you have regarding this topic in the comments. As always, remember to have fun and I'll see you guys next time.